So this is types on the beam. What else can they do? A shallow dive. It's going to go for the deep dive, but it's only a 20 minute talk. So I'm Zach Kesson. I do training for Erlang Elixir, and I am from Beersheba, Israel, which is the little city in red down there. We're about an hour and change south of Tel Aviv by train. Lovely city. Come visit. The weather in the summer is hot and beautiful. We get basically six months of the year with sunny weather, no rain. So if you ever get tired of cold. Type annotations on the beam, by the way, most of these early examples are from Learning Me Some Erlang, so thanks to Fred for putting them all online. I just stole them. And basically everything I'm going to say here also applies to Elixir using Erlang examples. We can create types, like for example, the. Um, so you can see that I have a type suit. Spades, clubs, hearts, diamonds, and type value, 1 to 10, jack, queen, king. And the type of card, which is a two bullet with suit value. And then you have these functions here, kind, where, blah, blah, blah. You just you see the card. It's pretty short. And then we have some examples here where we basically test. And you see this, this should all work, except for we actually break the contract. There is no type. Rubies, you know, at least not in my deck of cards. Maybe yours has one, I don't know. So, what we can do is add a spec to that, which basically we say the type is a kind of takes a kind of takes a card and returns either face or number. Okay, so now we have explicitly written out what the contract for this kind function will be. And then if we run dialyzer over that, we get this lovely error here, which the, the kind breaks the contract. Card is card to face a number because rubies is not a valid value for card. It's a basic dialyzer. Okay. So first question is who here adds type annotations to their code? Well, most people. Cool. And who uses dialyzer? <laughs> Still most people. That's what we could. I recommend, by the way, if you don't use Dialyzer, start using it when you start your project. Because if you write six, <laughs> code for six months, then run Dialyzer, you will be very sad. <laughs> Just saying. So there's some limits to Dialyzer. First of all, it doesn't actually do anything at runtime. It's just doing static analysis. So that's you know the first problem with Dialyzer. So the question I have is, well, what else could we do with these type annotations in our code, right? I mean, Dialyzer is great. I like dialyzer a lot. Uh, I wish its errors were a little more easy to understand sometimes, but it's you know it's generally good stuff. So what about validation? Uh, Loic, who created Cowboy, created a project called Sheriff, which can do. So here we have a, a type color, and you can see blue, red, green, yellow. And in this function, you can do Sheriff check colors color, and I'll use a parse transform to actually validate that code, that that value. Color is one of those four out. That's awesome. Only one problem. The last commit was in 2013. I'm pretty sure this was somebody's summer of code project, and then after they finished, nobody ever used it again. So it's you know you can find it on GitHub. I recommend looking at it, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend. I personally would not use it because, like I said, the last commit was in 2013, unless I was prepared to maintain it. So, but it, it, it is illustrative as to you know what types of things we can do. Uh, you can, if you look at uh, the property testing tool, it uses type annotations to generate property based testing values of property based testing. So you can argue back and forth whether or not that's actually a useful thing to do, but it doesn't. Problem is two problems. With pro a couple problems. With problem. First is it's under the GPL. For some companies, that's a problem. Uh, consult your legal team. I'm not going to tell you you should or shouldn't use it. And it can only work with Erlang. So if you're using Elixir or LFE or any of the languages on the beam, you're SOL. The question I was asking myself, how can we get type info from our code? And I know the APIs are there. I know it's possible. But finding out how to do it was actually surprisingly difficult. Kind of buried. And you have to really search. So I thought I'd go over it with you. And then I'll let you think about what you could do in the future with some of that. Because I don't really have it idea of this yet. So let's say we take this, this Erlang module, which should also work with Elixir, and the Fibonacci function, the very inefficient version, but that's okay. We don't really care. Got some types, got some 
spec, and I would actually like to get what are the types that are reported here, and what are the specs for all the functions here in a machine readable form. Right? I would like that because if, if I can't get that, then I can't. If I can get that, then I can do something useful with it. So what I was able to find is this code. This code, which is a bit of a mess. This is. I'll put this all up on GitHub later. By the way. So you can see code is loaded. We'll give you. You got to jump through a couple hoops here. Code is loaded. We'll take a module. We'll give you the beam file for which the beam file. The module info does not do that. By the way, uh, I had to go through the the module info. The Erlang shell function. And then you can do a uh, dialyzer utils module, which ships with Erlang. Get core from, from the beam. And then you can get record, get record and type info, which will give you some records. And then you can get the spec info. So this is kind of, it's not really complicated, it's just kind of obscure because these functions are not easy, easy to figure out what they are, where, even, what they, that they exist at all. I mean, you sort of actually know they must be there somewhere. But finding them is hard. So anyway, this is the records. Sorry, I didn't plug it. The records from that file. And you can see it gives me the, uh, the file name. And then um, two is you know, a count, which is a type, an integer, and a color, which is this, so on and so forth in this case. And here we have the type color. It says you have the union of these types here, and so on. So that, that, that's nice. That gives you some useful information. So this zero here, a couple, of that one there and there, and that's the arity of the type. I could not figure out where this this data structure was documented, so I kind of had to reverse engineer it. If anybody knows where it's documented, I'd love to find out. Wait, wait, wait. What? Yeah. Thank you. And then you get the line numbers here, and then here you know this type union, atom red, atom green. Okay. And then you get the spec. This is the spec for that fib, fun, fib one function. You know, it takes an anonymous fun here. Type positive, you know, we got a positive integer, return a positive integer. Sort of, now, I haven't really done anything with this information yet. This is sort of just a, a speculative thing. But now that I know how to do this, I have some ideas. And I'm hoping that some of you will come up with ideas of what you could do with this. I like the idea of Lloyd Cat with Sheriff, uh, maintaining it or maybe making an Elixir version. You know, I mean, how many times have you defined a type, a bunch of different atoms, and then you had to just redefine it somewhere else for, to validate that you're actually getting those atoms in? Seems like extra work. That is my talk. Uh, my name is Zach. Want to come up and talk to me later? I would love to hear from you. And I do training for Erlang Elixir, so if your company's looking Help them out with Erlang or Elixir. Uh, please come talk to me.